What is up, guys? This is Pinzo back with another video today. And what I have for you guys is some more patch notes, actually. So this is, of course, predecessor. This is the version 0.04 patch note. So this is the Shin B patch. It's pretty dope. We're going to get into it. I'm going to go through it. Before we do, if you guys go on to enjoy the content, be sure to leave it a like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, like 60% of you guys who watch my videos aren't subscribed. So just click it. It helps me out a lot. So uh, we're going to get into this. So patch point four, this is obviously the shouldn't be patch, but there's some other decent sized things coming in this. This is not the AD carry patch. That will be two weeks from this. So in between Shinbi and Huntress, that patch in the middle in two weeks after Shinbi, that will be the big ADC uh, item patch. That is confirmed. We know that. Epic. We're going to jump into this. So patch point four this patch releases tuesday if you guys are watching this when it goes live or the, during the weekend the uh this is tuesday the 21st of february when this patch releases so uh this is basically a bunch of stuff you can pause and read this i'm not going to go over all of this this is basically like hey we know what you guys are thinking here's some of the stuff in this patch all looks good to me uh shinbi video this is a cool video it's just naibori kind of talking about some of the changes in the in the patch but we're going to talk about it so i'm going to skip this uh shinbi this is shinbi's kit she has a her passive uh it makes her autos do a additional magic damage based on her power obviously it's basically a small prophecy uh but then every 15 seconds it does quadruple damage so it turns from a prophecy into an oath keeper uh, on one hit and then every time you use an ability it reduces that by one second so this is kind of like a, I'm going to say this is a, a kind of alternate version to Howitzer's passive. They're very comparable. Um, it's, a, it's a cool ability. Her Q, uh, pretty low cooldown, low cost, spammable wolf. It runs in a straight line, doesn't go through walls. It doesn't look like it, at least we don't really know, but in any of the videos, doesn't look like it. It runs along the ground. I don't know if you can cast it up in the air. It looks like the wolf runs along the ground, so I don't, I'm, I'm not positive uh pretty good scaling low damage low base damage uh low cooldown you're gonna spam the, this it's kind of like a severog q it hits multiple people runs through people uh e circle rhythm this is the one where she grabs four wolves and they run around her this gives her a shield right when she uses it and then the wolves do damage uh seems decent not very high damage at all so something to think about but low cooldown again and the shield is pretty big uh right mouse is a dash she dashes and then she can dash again uh, pretty simple it does a lot of damage actually like the, the damage on this is actually really high if you hit both dashes uh something to keep in mind and then her ultimate is basically as you're hitting people with your other abilities uh they are gaining stacks the stacks go on each person so if there's two people in front of me there's like a rev and a richter in front of me and i hit revenant with three abilities and i hit richter with one when i press r it will target the revenant it will auto target the closest person like the the, the person in range with the most stacks so that person in this scenario would be Revenant, and it would hit him with three wolves in my ult. Um, it stacks, you can have up to eight stacks on someone. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. So yeah, it's it's a it's a like a single target burst damage ultimate. Uh really high damage on this. Like this is this is how he ult on steroids. Uh again, how he ult hits more times. But again, the single target deleting ultimate. I like it. Moving on, major improvements. The store is coming. We are getting the store. I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about this one. I'm assuming these are four of the skins, but you can see here that it says the store will launch with 12 skins. So I'm pretty excited. I'm, I'm of course, gonna, gonna buy them all up as soon as they're out. I'm not missing anything. Uh, so if you guys don't want to buy them yourself, you guys can always check this channel to see gameplay using the new skins. Uh, moving on, Fang Tooth update. This is a pretty big one. So. You guys can stop and read every word of this if you guys would like, but I'm going to explain it to you. So, Fangtooth now caps at 3. You don't get to stack Fangtooths indefinitely now. However, the third Fangtooth is slightly stronger, giving 8% bonus stats instead of 6% bonus stats. Uh, the first two Fangtooths are the same, do the same thing. However, after 3 Fangtooths have been killed, so total Fangtooths, the third Fangtooth... Uh, it will spawn primordial or pri primal fang tooth is what they're calling it. This is a bigger, bigger fang tooth. It has like, it looks like it has a breath attack, um, that kind of thing. It's a different, it's a different model. It's a new fang tooth. Um, 
after three have been taken this thing spawns and it's it when you kill it it gives you the normal fang tooth buffs if you don't have all three so if you already have three fang tooths and you kill primal fang tooth you're just going to get the second buff which we'll get to but if you have zero fang tooths and you kill primal fang tooth you will still get the jungle buff duration increase so you do you can still get up to three fang tooths even after primal is spawned you can still get those three fang tooth buffs uh the primal fang tooth itself will give you a buff lasting for uh two and a half minutes um that gives you bonus true damage on to enemies based on how long the game is so you can see here the damage it deals is two per minute of the game per seconds over four seconds so let's say you kill this at 25 minutes that would be two per minute times 25 so 50 damage per second for four seconds so 200 true damage upon uh damaging an enemy this does not stack it does additional damage will refresh the duration so this should uh, affect enemy minions i am assuming this affects orb prime uh, and enemy heroes shouldn't hit towers shouldn't hit core that kind of thing but uh it's just and then the damage increased by 50 percent against heroes below 25 percent max health so in the 25 minute example it would do 75 damage per second to someone below 25 percent max health this is a kind of a comeback mechanic i think it also will be a win more mechanic but to be honest, if you have three Fang Tooths and you're already winning the game and then you get Primal, uh, you should probably just be winning anyway. Like this damage, if you're five levels up on someone, an extra uh, 40 damage a second true damage isn't going to change that 1v1 99% of the time. If you're behind, having extra true damage is going to change that 1v1. So this is more of a comeback mechanic than a win more. But I can see it being used for both. This should stop a lot of these uh, Fangtooth snowballing. Because the issue before wasn't Fangtooth number three. It was what happened if you gave up Fangtooth number three. Let's say someone got staggered and they get Fangtooth number three. You are absolutely forced to fight Fangtooth number four or you lose. This is gonna this is gonna tone that back a little bit. So that's really cool. Player versus AI. So AI matches are coming in this patch. Really big, really good for new players. I'm sure it's buggy. We're all going to be in this one together. I'm going to play it. I'll, I'll let you guys know how it is. Uh, it, I, I'm really excited about this one. Uh, Gadget base skin change. This is an odd one. Gadget is going to have her base skin changed to the shell shock skin, which is the one where she kind of has some armor on. Uh, doesn't really change anything for me. I th hope they release Gadget skin, like her her primary skin now as a skin that you can buy in the shop later that's what smite does when they remodel characters i think that'd be really cool uh, other improvements for the most part these don't matter too much um i'm trying to think i thought something in here yeah so client server delay on ranged autos have been reduced by 50 i don't know if this i, I really don't know what this means it's kind of in code uh, i don't know what it means really we'll we'll see uh let's see what else is in here uh some sound impact or some sound updates that kind of stuff uh let's see so balance changes we're gonna get into this there's some good stuff in here so crunch gets a gets a shift this is a net buff for crunch he gets a little bit of damage on his on his e five damage at every rank and then his q gets some damage taken off of the base but 20 percent extra scaling means that if you're building him with like I don't know really any amount of power like if you have more than like 200 power you're going to be doing more damage so uh crunch is really strong like like this this buff will make his jungle clear very good i don't know if it'll bring him into true contention with some of the other junglers but we'll get into it as we keep going uh gideon health growth minus five per level this is taking off like 90 health at the end of the game i think all mages need to lose about 300 health at the end of the game like like through their levels mages are really tanky in this game uh, this is a start. This is to stop you from going uh, like early true silver, or if you're going true silver, you're going to get less kind of value out of it because you'll have less health. Uh, this doesn't matter. Gideon's still decent. Muriel changes. So these ones are good. I like these changes. They took her in a direction that I think they want her to go in. I think it'd be cool if they gave her like a cleanse kind of thing, uh, but that's not the direction they want to go. So uh, Serenity, this is her Q, uh, line attack that slows, deals damage. It slows more for longer. So just a buff in all the ways. 
uh, alacrity this is her right click for some reason this was just like a base shield and now it will have some scaling so this shield will scale 20 percent of your magic power uh this is a good change obviously again just a net buff her e so her e is going to be a considerable amount more shield this is 50 more shield at final rank but it's going to get a cooldown increase by two seconds at every rank. So what this is going to give you is more, it's going to give you higher impact plays a little bit less often. I like this. Uh, it's a, it's a cool change. The shield doesn't last very long. So you're going to have to be really good at timing this. Like I think Muriel is going to take a decent amount of skill from the support position. And then her ultimate just gets really some quality of life changes. It gets a little bit of a lowered cooldown, but then it's going to cast much faster. This stun duration and charge up time, these are both the casting parts of this. It does nothing on the damage or the landing, etc. Uh, it's just going to cast faster. So some quality of life on her ultimate is always nice. Narbash, this is probably one of the more broken characters since the last patch. Uh, gets a mana hit at level 1. Uh, gets hit, a passive hit. And then his healing goes down a little bit at every rank. And he gets a little bit less scaling. So this scaling doesn't matter. Don't look at that. The base numbers don't matter too much. So I will say that the this this heal change will probably have you maxing out your heal first. Right now, what I, I do on Narbash is get three points of the heal, and then you can max either your March or your Thunk, depending on what you need. But now you're probably going to have to max your E all the way to five, and then uh, you'll be able to, to start maxing your other abilities. Keep in mind, Narbash, this, this, these numbers are, so these numbers are better early game num base numbers, but slightly worse late game numbers than his original numbers before the buff. But keep in mind his E, his, his, his heal now generates two passive stacks per uh, second of healing, which means that all in all, because you'll, you will always have more passive stacks while you're healing. Uh, this is going to be fairly similar power level, probably a tiny bit better than Narbash was before they changed his heal last patch. I still think he's in a net buff posi position since before last patch. This is definitely going to bring him down a notch, which is good. I hate this character right now. He's so frustrating to play against. Uh, Rampage. You're going to get a little less power per level. Uh, you're going to get a little less uh, bonus damage on his jump. His jump has damage scaling off of your health. You're going to get a little less of that. And then his E gets a, a small damage hit, 30 base damage and 10% scaling. I still think Rampage is going to be good. As long as Fire Blossom clears the jungle the way it does and he has a two second stun, he's going to be a decent character. Revenant gets some, gets some uh, push towards the physical side. They didn't like the way that everyone was building him magical. So they're pushing him back a little towards physical. You're going to get a little more power scaling if you have crit, and you're going to get a little less magic scaling on your Q. He's still decent. He's a This is a net buff. Realistically, if you were building in magical power, you, you were kind of trolling. So uh, this is a net buff to Revenant. Richter, a little less base mana regen, and then his right click, is go, his hook is going up to 120 mana. This is crazy. I, I don't know about this one. I would rather have them take damage off this ability than up the mana this far. Like, I understand they don't want you just, just fishing for it, but at the same time, uh, this, this is pretty wild. Severog, a little less health regen at level 1, and then his Siphon is getting some power scaling taken off of it, and some healing de decreased. Keep in mind, you're healing the same amount off of heroes. They just don't want you to be able to full heal off of a wave of minions. I understand it. I think he's still probably good. Build Mutilator first on Sev or seconds, and you're, you're going to be okay. Uh, items. So this is getting into the items part. You can see in this patch, they're looking at Omni Vamp. Apparently, there's like a build going around where you build like Nightfall uh, and Mutilator and Tectonic Mallet, and you just kind of heal through everything. I haven't really seen it, but apparently that's a thing. Nightfall is getting the Omni Vamp taken off of the base item, and it's getting it increased on the passive. So when you trigger the passive, you'll still have a decent amount of Omni Vamp, but you're not getting this on the base item. Uh, and then there's some other stuff changed in here. This is a pretty good buff to Nightfall. Uh, almost makes it buildable. The, this physical pen increase, I think, is the most important thing on this buff. I'm going to say this is borderline buildable on very specific characters. Mutilator. Omnivamp gets decreased, but haste gets increased. This is this item is still going to be really... This, item, this is probably a net buff on Crunch, actually. This is, you'd probably rather have 5 haste than 3% lifesteal on Crunch. Uh, still going to be decent on Fang Mao, uh, good on Chimera if you're playing against, you know, like a Rampage, that kind of thing. Uh, passive, still really good. So this is still a good item. 
Tectonic Mallet gets a shift, takes the Omni Vamp off, but gains some ability haste, a little more uh, armor as well. This item is just still too too weird to buy. Don't buy it. Wellspring basically just gets a quality of life. It won't use the passive if you're if everyone's full health. If everyone around you is full health, it won't it won't trigger the the healing passive. Uh, as for bug fixes, I think there were a couple of things in here that uh, mattered. Yeah, yeah. So this one, uh, Murdoch Stim Pack would r fully negate Gideon's passive. Now it will use it properly where instead of not taking damage from Gideon, you will still be linked and you will still take damage from Gideon passive, but you will not be slowed. Uh, really good change. That's been in the game since it came out. Super annoying. Uh, Gadget Sticky Mine, her Q will not go through Decker Cage anymore. That got fixed. Apparently that was a bug. That's interesting because now you're talking about Decker Cage blocking abilities. Uh, should it block, you know, Gideon's right click? Does it block Gideon's right click? Honestly, I don't know. You know, you get into some weird balance stuff. Not sure about this one. I like it being able to throw abilities through the cage, but if that's where they want to go, go for it. Uh, prophecy no longer triggers wraith leggings. You could get mega move speed on on auto attack mages, so that's not in the game anymore. Fixed a bug where Revenant's Q would chase targets through or would not chase targets through walls. I thought this was a counterplay to the ability where like if he queued you and you could break line of sight from the missiles, they would hit the wall and like not hit you. Apparently that was a bug. So now Revenant Q will if it targets you, it'll it'll hit you through walls. So just keep that in mind uh, when you get hit by a Revenant Q through a wall when you aren't expecting it. That's intended. Other than that, uh, I'm not I'm trying to think. I don't think anything in here is too crazy. Yeah, I don't think anything else in here is uh, is too good. Oh, uh, but they fixed Countess's hair. So Countess's hair, uh, fixed a bug where Countess's hair would uh, scale correctly with Saphir's mantle. Countess is balanced now because they fixed her hair. So don't don't even worry about it. She's she's in a good spot. Uh, you'll notice carries didn't really get touched. Again, I think they're just waiting for the carry patch. I would expect a lot of carry changes to come through in two weeks. I think that's fine. I don't mind them where they're at. I mean, yes, they're annoying, but it's not the most annoying thing in the game. So I'm going to try not to complain too much about carries. Overall, I think this is a pretty good patch. There's some big stuff in this patch, like AI, big fang tooth changes, store, shinbi. This is a pretty big one. So hopefully you guys are... Sorry, I just muted myself. So hopefully you guys are able to jump into Predecessor yourself on Tuesday the 21st and get into the game. That's all I've got for you guys. That's all the patch notes. Let me know if you have questions down below. Let, I can explain stuff for you if you need me to. But that's all I've got for you guys. So as always, I've been Pinzo. This video is done -zo. Thank you guys for watching. And I will see you guys in the next one.